Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to week 11 of our class on emotional wholeness. I hope all of you are doing well and enjoying God's grace and mercy. Um, welcome to all our e-learning students as well, uh, who continue to keep uh, walking alongside with the course. We welcome all of you as well. We trust that uh, as you're learning, you're being encouraged, you're being built up. Uh, a lot of the truths that we learn through these lessons are being applied on a regular day-to-day -day basis. So oh, we're just praying that uh, each of us are uh, being made whole, um, even as we walk through this journey of life. Uh, so shall we just start with a word of prayer? I'll uh, start and uh, we could all join in. Heavenly Father, gracious Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this new um, gift of a day that you have given each one of us. Lord, we are so um, amazed at your work in our lives. Thank you, Father, for bringing each one of us here to listen, to hear, to understand, to apply, to be changed emotionally in our spirits in our minds father lord even as we go through new uh, words from your scripture we pray that uh, whatever struggles we may be going through each of us in our different areas of life that you would uh, teach us to be to apply your word and live victorious and abundant lives as you have promised father we pray that your joy would be made whole in each one of us, Lord. Thank you for bringing us here today, Lord. We pray for those who are yet to come. We pray that you remove every kind of a hindrance or limitation that they may be facing to join in today. Lord, we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit works in a deep and a wonderful way as we move forward in learning further today. Thank you, God. We submit the next uh, two hours to your throne of grace and pray that you will mightily work a new thing, Lord, a supernatural thing in each of our lives. We ask all these things in your precious and matchless name. Amen. Okay, we, um, so we, we're, we're into, um, um, into the next chapter of our lesson on emotional wholeness. Um, we are, this is, we've been going through the last 10 weeks about, about uh, different ways of uh, understanding um, the things of the mind, things of how we, we get into issues and problems, how we can, be, how we can uh, get our healing and our deliverance and walking into emotional wholeness. Uh, the last week we spoke about staying emotionally whole and uh, we, we looked at a couple of spiritual disciplines in uh, helping us walk into that, um, into, uh, into journeying into spiritual, into emotional wholeness. Today we're going to be looking at another um, very related, very important part of our emotional wholeness, which is the work of our minds, the conquest of our minds. So I'm on chapter seven at page 40. If you would like to go through um, this alongside with me, that would be uh, would be wonderful. What we are going to be doing in class today is um, taken partly from um, another one of the resources that we have available, which is the conquest uh, of the, uh, which is the uh, conquest of the mind, which is available at the at the website, uh, I will post the link uh, in between so that you can go in and uh, you know take some time to read this uh, uh, this book as well. But we will be um, following some bits of it in this lesson. Uh, a greater, you know, more intense reading can be found in that uh, book as well. Okay, so um, we're going to look at how and what do we. Uh, what is the relation of the mind to uh, to our emotional wholeness? So, if we remember, we we did talk about the mind uh, in our in our very first class, and we 
we spoke about how man being a tripartite being, being having the body, the soul, and the spirit. We did see that when we are born again, our spirits are the one is is the part of us that is born anew, that is um, uh, bought uh, um, afresh and new in in the image of God, and we are filled with the nature of God in our spirits when we come to a place of salvation, when we receive um, uh, salvation, when we become born again, when we believe in Christ. When we are in Christ, we become that new creation in our spirits. However, our minds and our bodies are not born again, and our, um, our minds and our bodies are things that continuously needs to be renewed. Okay, so if um, what is in the spirit um, is is what should be seen on the outside. So the soul and the body uh, needs to be renewed. The the soul needs to be renewed, and the flesh needs to be crucified. Which which is something apart that we will be looking at next week. How the body or the flesh needs to be crucified uh, as we walk into emotional as, and as we maintain that emotional ho wholeness. So the responsibility of the the mind. Uh, stays with us. The responsibility of of um, renewing the mind and crucifying the flesh stays with us as a believer, and that's something that we continue to do um, by studying God's word and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so here today we are just going to be focusing on the mind and what needs to be done and how we can do it. So let's let's first of all look at what are some of the uh, functions of our mind? So the mind is the seat or the core center where we uh, go center of the of the functions of our brain. So you know our brain helps our mind to think, to reason, to learn, to feel, to remember, to recall. So every function of the brain um, is is manifested out of the mind. And our mind becomes important because these processes, these, um, these functional processes that we spoke about, like especially our thoughts, um, it is our thoughts that really feed into our actions. Our actions is, is thereby moves into our behavior. And our behavior is what really brings about the way that we live or our lifestyle. So our thoughts are what determines this, uh, these things. Our thoughts or things that we think about is what really affects our emotions. And we, we saw that kind of a, a relation uh, both in this class as well as those of you who've been in the uh, Christian counseling, we did see, see that, that our thoughts affect the way that we feel. And this these emotions affect the way that uh, we respond spiritually, we respond uh, mentally as well as physically. Um, what we think and whatever we imagine, the, the things that we imagine are things that either uh, brings us to a place of constructive um, uh, demeanor or a destructive one or that that which is really propels us or that which could could break us down so these faculties of our of our of our mind the ability to learn to reason to understand to imagine um, to feel to remember all of this are very important and uh, that becomes the construct of everything in our lives so what is in what happens in our spirit uh, the 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 refreshing or the 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 new creation that happens in our spirit is something that needs to be continually released into our minds and into our bodies. So God uses this this faculties that we have um, in in uh, in His work in us and and the way that He talks to us in the way that He communes to us. So we did look at um, significantly at what what are the certain problems that uh, that that is caused so we do see that because of 
where we are and um, you know in in the place that we are in the world that we live in uh, the interactions we have our mind is like a battlefield it is always constantly being thrown in with all kinds of information with ideas with sights with sounds um, with, with anything around us and how what are the windows to our mind is of course through our physical senses what we see what we hear what we smell what we touch and what we taste all of this brings in information into our mind so constantly at all points right from the waking up uh from the time you wake up till the time you sleep, your mind is always being thrown with different kinds of information. And this information uh, has a way to impact the way that we think, impact the way that we feel, and impacts the way that we may behave, or it brings about certain responses <clears throat> and certain reactions uh, to us. So the the that's what we need to ensure on one point to be able to guard um what is being what are the things that influences us so we may not really uh, at all points of time we may not have a complete control of um uh of what we are seeing what we are hearing um uh, although there are of course some places where we do not give in to those temptations or give in to those desires there may be a lot of times that we may be in the midst of receiving information that where we have not willfully placed ourselves like for example you may be uh, driving on the street and you may you know you may you may come across a huge billboard that has some uh, you know questionable material on it and uh, you have come across it and you know it's not that you 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 can stay at home and not drive out into the street there there are things that you need to do but your mind gets gets this information uh, a lot of times even when you're not in a place of being able to control it so there are times that you may you may be bombarded with things that you may not be able to completely control or the information that you may not be be able to control and this is what the the enemy and uh, you know the evil evil one does is to use whatever you are seeing or whatever you're hearing or the information that comes to give it to make it work on your minds so that it presents itself as thoughts as thoughts that become evil that is those evil thoughts or those ideas or those the kind of imagination that comes up so what you're seeing the enemy uses it to stir up desires that may be uh, that may be your own desires that that are internal and that um, and when we come to a place of not being able to resist these enticements or these these entrapments we become sucked in to what is wrong so the very fact that these the information or what you're seeing is being bombarded at you is not sin in itself the fact that you've probably seen it or or the thought has come and is not a sin in itself but what it does allowing it to dwell and to stir in to your desires and not being able to resist that is what becomes we will talk about that a little bit uh, later so james describes it in in scripture in uh, james 1 13 to 16 it says I'll, I'll read that for you let no one say when he's tempted i am tempted by god for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt anyone but each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed then when desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and sin when it is full grown brings forth death do not be deceived my beloved brethren so what we see here in this work in this verse is that temptation is or things that you see around is not something that is brought about by god it's 
it it says do not deceive yourself to think or you are in a state of deception or you're self deceiving yourself if you think that you are being tempted by god it is something that god is putting in front of you to tempt you but it very clearly says let no one say when he is tempted i am tempted by god for god cannot be tempted by evil nor does he himself tempt anyone right so and i think often we have heard probably people having the wrong notion of saying that god is the one who's tempting me i am being tempted by god to do this kind of a sin okay but it very clearly says verse 14 each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desire and and is enticed so it is our own flesh or we are drawn by our own desires it's something that is conceived from within the carnal mind we this the desire is conceived um within us and when we yield to sin as it says in verse 15 when desire has conceived that is when it has come about when those when those um um those desires are are being birthed within us in in itself that's when and when you yield to that that's what causes sin okay and i'm just looking at it uh, in another version um i just wanted to read that out for you in another version which uh, just give me a minute um okay so it says um temptation it, this is from uh, from uh, nlt that's the new living translation uh, so i'll just read that out again and remember no one wants to do wrong should no one who wants to do wrong should ever say god is tempting me god is tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else either temptation comes from the lure of our own evil desires so each man is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust or enticed and baited by his own desire or his own lust or his own passion when he is trapped when he is dragged and trapped by the by one's own um, desires and so there it says when it is conceived it gives birth to sin and that becomes full grown when you when you dwell in it more and more it brings forth death so an example that we could probably look at is um uh, uh, the common example of um, you know um when when people lust uh, after after wrong thoughts so there is probably um maybe an image that flashes by or an image that one sees maybe in a newspaper or on a bull billboard or any kind of maybe a material that you're reading there is this these um the the image that that comes about and that begins to begins to entice or that begins you you draw you're drawn in by your own desires and when it is conceived so that the desire is already birthed and you give birth to sin when you yield to that when it you keep dwelling you keep thinking about it more and more coming to a place of of you know flourishing that very conceived desire in your mind by adding to it by uh, by you know putting a lot more of uh, um of spice to it and that's what gives birth to sin so when it it is full grown then it leads to a behavior or it leads to something that causes you to sin okay so it scripture is very clear about the fact that the mind is the place where we are drawn by our own desires when when we are enticed what happens when we are enticed our wills are weakened it it weakens our our will or our determination okay and it entraps it's almost like like a mouse being trapped in a mouse trap okay and the desire has been conceived and you yield to that desire and this is the what this is what that results in in sin so when we have our desires aroused within us for something that is wrong we are drawn by these desires but remember it is still not sin becomes sin 
when we have yielded to the desire, when we have fallen for the desire, it is then that we have we have sinned. Okay, so a lot of times, and, and we do see that there are many times Christians do condemn themselves because these wrong desires have been aroused in them, or you know there is a desire that's come up. So that in itself is not sin. Only when we yield, when we pay attention, when we dwell in it, but, um, we we uh, and this is done by when we are committing a wrong act or continuously feeding in and contemplating these desires have have we sinned and so all of this happens within the entrapment of the mind and you know to to just understand the mind is so powerful to 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 bring about a, a small desire into something that is such a full blown um you know well planned uh uh thing so even even in in issues like um maybe in an emotion you know so maybe you've heard something that has that has caused a sense of anger that has caused uh, i i will answer the question mangi just a minute for me to just complete so the um, uh, when when you're having a specific emotion that comes up you know the the fact that maybe you've heard something and scripture says in your anger do not sin right so yes the emotion of anger is probably something that is natural and we spoke about that i think a couple of weeks back where we said our emotions are naturally given to us it is acts like a barometer but when we we face that anger and we begin to contemplate it we begin to grow more and more of it you know begin to picture in our minds about the anger add in more thoughts that feed in to the anger that uh, that grows into so you you're yielding to that anger and creating a lot more of um, a lot more of substance to the anger willfully contemplating the anger that's when you have sinned and it moves from one to another so if we remember we had spoken about this earlier also you know the the anger moves into rage moves into probably murder or a sadness moves into helplessness moves into hopelessness could move into depression um uh, the, the thought of lust can move into, uh, you know, stronger, stronger enticement of lust that can move into adultery. So this is a progression. So what we do see is that when we, uh, when when the when when the desire is conceived, that's where we come to a place of being able to understand that the mind is very powerful to move it from one to another and what we're looking at is at here is how do we conquer that what do we do when when these grip our mind what is it that we can do to keep ourselves away from being from falling into a place of sin okay uh, yes mangi how um, i think you had a question oh, would you like to bring your question up please okay thank you pastor um if, if if I hear correctly, and if the scripture we read, which is true, says that we we are tempted by our own desire, by things that uh, we see, and then we, we conceive those ideas in our, in our in our mind, in our hearts. So most of the time, they say that the devil. Okay. Oh, well, my question is, where what when does the devil come in, and where? Because many people say that, oh, it is the devil is tempting us. The, de the enemy is doing this while the, the, the word says it's our own mind, our own desire that leads us to sin. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. So you're saying, when does the devil come in? Um, when we have, so remember, we've been talking about open doors, where we open the door for the enemy to walk in. And uh, when these are, desires are being conceived and we are contemplating further on that, yes, we are opening the door for the enemy to walk in and create damage in us. So once we have given the enemy a foothold, we have, we have managed to bring entrance into the evil one. So it, it talks about how you resist the devil. Resisting the devil is also... In, um, ways of how you would conquer these thoughts in your mind by using 
sorry by using scripture or by you by by the power of the holy spirit so it initially begins when we give permission we give you know open a door like a thief does not um uh, you know uh, uh, an intruder does not walk in until there is an open door or you have given or he deceives you into entering the door entering your house right so to being being able to resist the devil means that you need to stand in the armor of god not giving permission to what the enemy is uh, is 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 standing in to come in so that's where the enemy walks in but initially it is your desires that conceive sin that conceives uh, your desires that are being that are being uh, that are being yeah, I mean, sin is being conceived in your heart when your desires are being uh, are are led to that. So it's only after that is when the enemy walks in. Nangi, I hope I answered that question. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, Elisha. I think you have a question too. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, the question was was put on the screen, but let me let me. Ask. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah yes please go ahead uh, you mentioned that uh, god does not uh, tempt us and that is according to uh, james uh, but uh, if you read the story of jesus temptation on the wilderness uh, we read that jesus was led by the holy spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil that is one hmm. and then when you read um Matthew chapter 6 which uh, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray a part of the prayer reads that and lead us not into temptation um i believe this presupposes that we can be led god can lead us into temptation that is why we pray to him that he leads us not into temptation so kindly help me understand with the with what james says that god cannot tempt us okay all right okay thank you thank you for that question okay um uh, so i think let's look at the word temptation and this is the word temptation can also refer to the word trials okay and uh, 1 corinthians uh, uh i think it's um, I'm just going to give to pick, pick up that verse. I think it's one Corinthians chapter ten, verse uh, thirteen. Okay, one Corinthians ten verse thirteen says, uh, "No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able." but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So, so here the word temptation refers also to trials. And we know that you know God will not test us beyond our ability in Christ Jesus. Um, to We will be given the ability to bear it and God will always provide a way out. Um, God does subject us to trials that may expose us to the enemy's assaults for for his own purposes like as you can see in uh, in job um, if the temptation in the lord's prayer refers to trials then you know the meaning of um, th that verse matthew chapter 6 verse 13 is do not afflict or try us it's so it's not wrong to pray that we we may be delivered from trials and sufferings as we submit to the will of god the believer can ask the Lord to be delivered from testings um, or for strength. So I, I see that this word of temptation is a referring to trials more than, more than, um, uh, you know, um, more than the desires, the desires being conceived. So if we were to, uh, you know, look at these words, lead us not to into temptation, um, you know, it, it's, it's like, uh, you know, a, a person taking maybe maybe a mother taking her young children with her 
to a place and maybe to the shop and she knows that taking her children in that uh, through that shop will only bring them up uh, into a place of greediness in their hearts to to you know maybe to whine and to pout for something so in wisdom she's taking another place where she she may have um, you know needed down that that go down that uh, that that store or that place where where they're getting chocolates they will have to wait for another day so in this way the mother is moving away the unpleasantness and sparing the children from that kind of of a of a trial so praying lead us not to temptation is like is like saying god you know do, do not take me down that wrong path today it's recognizing that we often can grasp things that are not right or may get into places that is not profitable for us and that god's wisdom can keep us away from that unpleasantness um uh, of of that sin so when we are asking god to lead us away from sin or from difficult trials it's um it's it's the goal is also saying lord deliver us from the evil one it is it is a petition that we are asking of the lord so so there are two things so one is that we see that word as trials more so and that when we when we're talking about leading us not into temptation is that god gives us that grace that we will not be in positions where we are faced um uh, with with a temptation that he will he will give us the the wisdom and the ability and he will help us through that so that's that's what specifically is meant by by that scripture i hope i was clear enough was able to articulate it uh, okay elisha yes yes ma'am yes all right thank okay you thank you all right so um moving on um yeah okay so when i think there's another question is there another question sorry i can't see a hand up is there anyone else who has a question oh it was me sorry okay all right so we'll um so what we what we were looking at is so there are temptations and deceptions um and all kinds of things that grip us as believers and this so what we were determining is that all of this starts with just a thought in the mind okay and uh, we also do see um, you know like like elisha you said that when when jesus was tempted in the wilderness that's what we we have seen in in matthew and in luke we can deduce that these also came as Uh, thoughts and pictures in the mind and the way that the lord refutes is refutes it is by the word of god so uh, that's what we understand that you know these could be uh, would it, uh, it it's an understanding that it may not have been that jesus was taken up literally to these places but it could we can just deduce that these could come in as thoughts or pictures in the mind like like it it does come in for us and the way that the lord refutes that is through the word of god so we do see that a lot of things that we may be we are going through is is built up in the mind and uh you know i think just to bring in some more examples is that when um let's say in a workplace you know you're you're sitting in your workplace and maybe your boss has given your uh, you know given some kind of a work that you've been proficient in to somebody else okay and uh, this is a situation as it is but then the mind begins to conceive it um in a very different way depending on whatever background or an experience and jealousy can can build and can build covetousness can build all of this happens within the mind so to to begin with it a certain uh, to begin with it it starts with a very very small thought it's like you know a a, a small fire or a small spark that when the mind begins to contemplate begins to sit in it becomes as huge as a forest fire and begins to uh, dis- destroy everything around it so keep a picture of that in mind every information everything that comes in uh, starts with within the mind so that's that's a reason why we understand that the mind becomes 
uh, that's why we call the mind a battlefield. So we're going to be looking at three specific points as to what, how do we, how do we conquer this? <clears throat> what do we do to combat the the struggles that the mind has? And um, to take it, three disciplines is one is to be take is to take every thought captive. The second is to come to a place of renewing the mind, and the third is to uh, developing a mindset that is positive. Okay, so we look at we'll spend some time uh, looking at the first one, taking every thought captive, and let's look at the scripture that talks about this in two Corinthians ten verses three to five. Okay, so it says, "For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh." For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to God in pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Okay, so when we look at these verses, the war that Paul is really referring to is all that has to do in the mind. So there are a lot of, um, if, if you look at that verse, there are many things that talks about um, uh, uh, about ways or, or descriptions of how things have become very embedded. And you see words like strongholds, you, we, you read words like arguments or in other translations, the words that are used is imaginations, the words that are used are reasonings. They become like strong pillars and foundations that occupy the mind, okay? So when you look at the word stronghold, it is the word stronghold in itself uh, appears as something that that is very deeply rooted, something that has it, its foundations very, very deep, not something that can be easily uprooted, you know. Like, for example, when you look at a banyan tree, it has a very strong root system. It's not something that you can uproot easily. It's It's got its roots so ingrained and far into the soil that it is not easily shakable. And these strongholds, uh, so, so picture it, it like that, it is a fortress and it's something that has been occupied and uh, it, it is a place that has been controlled. So when you have a stronghold in your mind, it is that which is built with, with multiple thoughts and arguments and reasoning and imaginations that become very embedded in in our uh, in our minds and this begins how does this begin it begins with thoughts it just begins with those initial roots like even the banyan tree it started off probably with one root but then as it grew it started making its inroads into the part of the soil so what does what does scripture say here how do we conquer our mind is um, it 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 talks First and foremost, that our warfare is not carnal, okay? Our, our, our warfare is not something that is of flesh and blood, but something that is spiritual in nature, okay? Something, where, where, and, and it, it talks about in the preceding, preceding verse that when we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, but according to what is happening in the spiritual realm. So we need to take every thought captive now what does that word captive mean it is to it is to enslave or it is to imprison so every time you have a thought that is not right or it says you know that exalts itself against the knowledge of god so every thought or every argument or everything uh, whatever there is that, that the mind conceives, you imprison it and you imprison it to the obedience of Christ. It's like, you know, if there is a convict or if there is a, if there is a criminal that's out, the first thing you need to do is to bring it in, bring him into captivity. Otherwise, he is going to create immense havoc. So we are to take every thought captive, make it 
a slave or enslave it or imprison it and bring it to the obedience of Christ. Okay, we are to cast down or bring down every argument, imagination, reasoning, every stronghold, every opinion that is contrary to the knowledge of God. So we are we have we have been called to do that, to bring it down, to bring it to a place of complete um, binding or to a place of submission. So if you, if you look at those entire verses, the the same theme is being repeated over and over again. And the next it says is we are to pull down or which is very similar to cast down. It is to break down. It, it is to, um, uh, you know, come against every brick that has been built over and over again. You cast it down, you pull it down um, uh, to bring it to the obedience of Christ. And how do we do all of this? We use it, we do it by what God has given us. Uh, and and it, it talks about the armor of God, right? And we all know that in Ephesians 6, it talks about the armor of God. We are to pull, pull it down using the armor of God. And the primary thing that we use is the word of God. The primary weapon that we use, that we use to bring these downs, these thoughts, these imaginations, these reasonings, these strongholds that has built itself up like a fortress, is through the word of God. As scripture says, it is living and active. The, the word of God is living and active, able. It is able to, to pull through, to, to um, uh, immerse through any, any uh, joint, any bone, any marrow, anything that is against the knowledge of God. And as we do that, you know, we, we will begin to see things breaking down. An example that we have seen is through what Jesus did when he was being tempted. All of those thoughts, those imaginations uh, that, the, that the devil brought to him was combated with, it is written. And you see that, you know, we've, we've, we've read this so many times. It says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shall not bow before anyone else but thy God. Right? So it is written. So the primary weapon that we use is the word of God. So what are we called to do in order to walk in that emotional wholeness, in walk in emotional fullness, is to at a regular basis to be able to guard our thoughts, our ideas, our imaginations that are being conceived in our minds, that's being thrown in our minds, that come to our minds against the word of God. It, so it's like, um, uh, it's like doing a test. Every time there is a thought that comes, you are putting it through a test to see whether it is contrary to what God's word says, or is it? Does it align to what God's word says? The the minute that you do see that it it is contrary to God's word, you take it captive, you enslave it, so that it does not build into something that that conceives itself as sin. It does not build itself. It, you do not contemplate in your mind to conceive it to sin. Now, this could be anything. You know, if you look at the varied number of instances or examples, it can be anything. It could even start with, with thoughts about oneself, right? About um, uh, maybe comments that are made uh, to you. And we, we spoke about it, you know, we said it, when, when people do say words uh, to us, it comes into us as a thought and it builds itself as a wrong thought and we dwell it, we, we you know, we decorate it, we, we feed it, we do all sorts of things to it to make it to bring it to something that it shouldn't be or to create uh, it in a proportion so much higher than what it came to us. Okay, So taking that captive and not letting this influence us. Okay, So what, what I'd like you to do is maybe through the last week, and I think this is a struggle all of us 
or this is a challenge that all of us go through, a trial, I'd say, that all of us go through, that um, especially when you have, you know, significant um, challenges in life where you're not seeing an answer, then there are these thoughts that come up, even the thoughts of, you know, maybe God doesn't love me, or maybe God blesses only somebody else. So these are thoughts that are enough to be created and to, to, to churn itself out and, you know, move into something that is much more, much more stronger, right? And, if, you know, even if you look at the temptation of Eve, um, we see that, you know, she saw something that was pleasing to the eyes and that began to conceive and uh, it, it began to conceive within, within her and she uh, lusted after what you know what the enemy said i mean did did god really say that you you cannot eat this god's going to open your eyes so you see that all of this began to churn inside conceiving bringing itself into sin so what i'd like you to do we have i think 5 minutes okay just quickly take some time to check on your thoughts or or what what have been any kind of ideas that you have um uh, uh, you have encouraged in your mind that has been contrary to God's word and, and put that down and uh, commit to, to enslaving this, commit to taking this captive over the next one week and begin to see the difference or the freedom that God gives you um, in your mind. It could be even something, something somebody has done and there is, there is a, there is a wrong thought that has come about it and which can lead to a place of unforgiveness. So come to a place of, of bringing it to, uh, enslaving it and imprisoning it and bringing it captive unto the obedience of Christ. Okay, so a few minutes, just take to write that down and, um, uh, you know, we can, we can probably uh, then break for class and uh, come back by 11 o'clock. Okay, so take three or four minutes to do that before you break in for class and we'll come back at 11 o'clock to, uh, to look at the other two points as well.
Okay, we shall break for, for 10 minutes and we'll come back at 11 o'clock to resume. Abraham, I'll take your question once we have returned. We'll stop in for a break and come back at 11. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> 